So as you can see from the title, this is going to be a tutorial for beginners that are wanting to learn CAD for 3D printing. Not only are you going to learn how to make your first 3D model in FreeCAD, but you're also going to learn how to read and decipher one of these technical drawings. And be sure to check out Too Tall Toby's YouTube channel. He has tons of videos on CAD competitions. It's really awesome and he has tons of these kind of technical drawings so that way you can practice on your CAD software. If you guys are feeling generous and would like to donate anything, you can go to my ko-fi, ko-fi.com forward slash DZ Artistries and make any donation that you would like to. Anything is generous to me and I appreciate all donations. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go to file and we're going to make a new document. CAD software allows us to design a piece in a two dimensional space and then we can turn it into a 3D model. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to come up here and we're going to click on create sketch. It's this icon with a red square and a circle. Just click on that and we're going to do it on the XY plane. So there's different planes that you can uh, make your models on the front, the sides and the top. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on XY plane or you can click XY plane over here and then you can press OK. At the top right of the sketch interface, you should see this little view cube right here. It should say top and we'll learn a little bit more about this later on. So the way we're going to complete this model is we're going to break down each section of this sketch and then we're going to translate it over to our CAD software. The first thing that we're going to work on is the overall shape, the outline of this sketch. So what we can see from this sketch is we have a rectangle, but it has rounded corners. Now all we have to do is break down the dimensions of this shape. As you can see here, each of these numbers has arrows pointing either up or down or left and right. In this case, we need to go from the top edge to the bottom edge and the left edge and the right edge, we need to see which dimensions are corresponding to those measurements. So we need to find the dimension that reaches from the top edge to the bottom edge, and that's the one that's all the way over here to the left, which is 59.2 millimeters. So that's gonna be the length of our model. Now we need to find the dimension that reaches from the very left edge to the very right edge, and that's gonna be this dimension down here at the bottom, which is 95.2 millimeters. As you can see in the sketch, each of these corners is rounded and we can get the radius of each of these corners by looking here where it says R17.6. This means that each corner has a radius of 17.6 millimeters. Now you can open up FreeCAD again, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna create that outline sketch for the entire model. And the way that we're gonna do this is we're gonna go to this rectangle tool up here. Now you wanna click on the arrow right next to it, and you wanna click on rounded rectangle. When you have the tool selected, if you hover over the main sketch section, you should see a rounded rectangle that is red at the bottom right of your cursor. With the tool selected, you want to left click anywhere on the screen, drag your mouse out a little bit, and we're going to manually enter the numbers for the dimension. So for the width, which is at the very top, we're going to put 95.2, and that's going to translate to millimeters. Then we're going to press tab, and we're going to put 59.2, and then we're going to press tab, and now you see at the bottom right, we have the radius for the corners. And we're just going to put 17, and then we can press tab, or we can press enter. And now you have your shape. So now we have our shape outline. But now what we need to do is we need to add constraints. Constraints keep your design precise and consistent by controlling relationships between parts, like ensuring symmetry, alignment, or fixed dimensions. For example, we need this sketch to be completely centered to this point right here in the middle of the screen. And we're going to do that by making sure we constrain these points right here at the top to the y axis line, which is this green line, and make sure that these points on the left are constrained to the center line that's on the x axis. And to do that, the tool that we're going to use is called Constraint Symmetric. And as you can see, it says, create a symmetry constraint between two points with a respect to a line or a third point. And so what we're going to do is we're going to select these two points. We're going to select the one at the top left and the one at the top right. Then we're going to select the vertical line. And then we're going to click on Constrain Symmetric. And now you can see that it is centered. Now that we have our sketch constrained horizontally, we need to constrain it vertically. And what we're going to do is we're going to select this point here, and we're going to select this point here on the left. And then we're going to select the horizontal line, the red line there, and we're going to press Constrain Symmetric here. And now you can tell that the entire sketch is constrained where it should be because now the entire thing has turned green. Some of the menu sections on your screen may be in different places, but what you want to do is you want to look for the tasks menu and then you want to go to close or you can click on the overall sketch and then you can press escape 
and then you should see the outline of your sketch here. And as I mentioned earlier about the view cube, now you can see that it's in a different perspective. Now we need to make this an actual 3D model. If we look at this bottom dimension on our sketch, it says two millimeters for the thickness. So let's go on ahead and extrude it or pad it two millimeters. So what we have to do is make sure that our sketch is selected and we're gonna go to this icon here. It has a little square that's red beneath it and above it is floating a little yellow box. So we're gonna click on that and you can see now it makes a 3D shape. And where it says length, you're gonna turn that to two millimeters. You can click on the gray area here and it'll update automatically and then we can just press okay. So now what we need to do is we need to work on these circular holes here. So we can see according to the sketch dimensions that each of these holes is going to have a diameter of 13 millimeters and is gonna be in 15 places evenly spaced. So we have right here a five by three, so we have 15 holes. If we look at the sketch dimensions, we can see that there is a constraint here and it says 17 TYP spacing. So what this means is between the center point of each of these circles, there must be 17 millimeters between them. And then we can see another constraint that does the same thing between these two circles and it says 17 TYP spacing, meaning that the center point for each of these circles has to have 17 millimeters between them vertically. Now you might be thinking that we're gonna create each individual circle and we're gonna dimension and constrain each of them individually. That's not what we're gonna do. We're gonna do a different approach. So what we're gonna do is based on the dimensions that we have given to us on this sheet, we're gonna make this first circle up here on the top left, and then we're gonna make a pattern that's gonna span horizontally and then vertically. So for this part, we're gonna use a slight bit of math. It's nothing too complex, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the vertical axis and we're gonna use the horizontal axis in order to constrain this circle. So as you can see from the center line on the vertical axis, it's two circles away from the middle. So that means if we're spacing them 17 millimeters apart, that means we have to do 17 times two, which is gonna be 34. So we're gonna set a dimension of 34 millimeters from the center on the vertical line. Now we need to count how many circles from the first bubble in the center, and that's obviously gonna be one, and the spacing is gonna be 17 millimeters. So on the center line, we're gonna add a constraint of 17 millimeters. So let's go into FreeCAD and let's implement this. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna click on the top face of this model, and then we're gonna go to create new sketch at the very top. Now what we need to do is we need to go over to this create circle by center tool. And if you don't see that there, just click on this arrow next to it and click create circle by center. You'll know that the circle by center tool is selected if you have this red circle with a dot in the center of it at the bottom right of your cursor. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna click anywhere, make sure you don't click on any of these lines or the center point, or it's gonna auto constrain. So just click outside of that, and then we're gonna expand it a little bit and we're gonna type 13 and you can either press tab or you can press enter. Now what you can do in order to deselect the tool is press right click. Now we need to add our dimensional constraints that we were just talking about when we were reviewing the technical drawing. And the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna use the dimension tool up here. So we're gonna click on this and then you're gonna click on this blue point at the center of the circle that we just created. Click that once. Then we're gonna click on the vertical axis line, which is this green line here. And then you can put this constraint anywhere that you want to, it's just gonna be the number. And then we're gonna click and we're gonna put 34. And then press okay, and you should be good. Since the dimension tool is still selected, we don't need to click on it again. What we can do is click on that blue point again, and then we go to the horizontal axis, which is this little red pinkish line. And then what we're gonna do is you can move this anywhere you want to, you can move it out of your way for visual comfort. And we're gonna set this to 17 millimeters. And now we're good. From here, we can right click so that way we can deselect the tool. And then we can either press escape or we can go to tasks and go to close. In order to make a hole with the sketch we just created, we need to use what's called the pocket tool. And you can see the description says, create a pocket with the selected sketch. So while your sketch is selected, you'll see that indicated by it being highlighted blue. You wanna click on pocket. So now you can see that we have our hole. And if you go to your task section, you'll see that we have the pocket parameters. So on type, it's set to dimension by default and length is five millimeters. What we can do is if we wanted to, we could set this to one millimeter and you can see that the hole only goes halfway through. So what we can do if we wanted to go all the way through is change the type to through all. Once we do that, we can press okay and we're done. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to demonstrate what we're going to be working with as far as making a pattern out of this hole. So what you want to do is you want to click on pocket and then you want to come over to this icon that has a blue cube followed by two yellow cubes and it says linear pattern. So if you come over to the task section and you look at all the parameters on linear pattern parameters, you can see that our pocket should be here as a feature. So now what we can do is we can set the horizontal axis as the direction or we can set the vertical axis. We're going to leave it on horizontal axis just for a sample real quick. So what we'll do is change the mode to offset. We'll change the offset to 17 millimeters. And then you can see the occurrences. In this case, we would need five. So now you can see one, two, three, four, five. Essentially, we're going to be doing this exact same thing, but we need to do what's called a multi-transform because not only do we need to do this horizontally, but we also need to do it vertically. So what we're going to do from here is we're going to just press cancel. We're going to click on our pocket and we're going to do a multi-transform by clicking on this icon here. It says create multi-transform. So as you can see, just like the linear pattern on the feature section, we have this pocket. So what we need to do now in order to add those linear patterns is we need to go to transformations and we need to right click it and then we go to add linear pattern. What we're going to do is make sure direction is set to horizontal axis and we're going to go to mode and set that to offset. And we're going to set the offset to 17 millimeters and we're going to make sure occurrences is set to 5. And then we're going to press OK. Now we're going to right click again. We're going to go to add linear pattern. We're going to change direction to vertical sketch axis. Now we're going to go to the mode, make sure that's offset. And we're going to put 17 millimeters again. And we're going to set occurrences to three. And we also want to make sure that we add the check mark to reverse direction. Now we press OK. And then we can press OK again. And our 3D model is complete. Now what we're going to do is we're going to verify two dimensions on this, which is this one right here, 47.6 millimeters. So from the left edge to the center of the center circle, it should be 47.6 millimeters on the horizontal axis. And then on the vertical axis from the very top edge to the center of the center circle should be 29.6 millimeters. So what we need to do is we need to select this very top face and you can do that from any perspective that you're looking at, whether it's from the front, the top, so what we're going to do is click on create sketch. Now, because we're using a shape as the reference for this sketch, this shape right here is considered external geometry. So we need to be able to get these edges in order to make the proper measurements. In order to reference external geometry outside of a sketch, we need to use the external geometry shape or create external geometry shape. And we're going to click on that. And then we're going to click on this top edge. We're going to click on this left edge. And then we're going to click on the edge of this circle here. So in order for me to measure that these lines are correct, what we're going to do is we're going to use this dimension tool here. So what we're going to do is click there and we're going to make sure that we click on this line here and then we're going to click on the very center here. And you can see it says 47.6 millimeters. That's what we want. Now what we're going to do is we're going to click on the top one and then we're going to go to the very center here and you can see it says 29.6 millimeters. So we are definitely good. So if you've made it this far and you have completed this entire tutorial and you've done it yourself, congratulations on completing your first model that you've done in FreeCAD or thank you for following alongside this tutorial and I hope that you found it very useful and helpful. And once again, if you guys are feeling generous and you found this useful and you'd like to donate to me, you can go to my ko-fi, ko-fi.com slash DZ Artistries, and you can donate anything. The link will also be in the description. Like I said, anything is welcome, and I appreciate any and all support. And thank you guys for watching this video.